Hello again, this is Ty Warner with Kiss Soft USA. Today I want to talk about the third part in our shaft design, shaft construction series. Um, first of all, we want to go ahead and I'm move this back to a 6205 bearing because there's some interesting things that I wanted you to see um, before you, oh, 6205. And, and the reason why we do some things a certain way, 6205. Okay, and this one initially was a 6205 as well. Let's grab this. Now, the, the 6205 bearing is a fine bearing. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, in this case, uh, we, we've, we've already en entered our gear loads, our chain loads. We've already entered our, our bearings and our speeds and that sort of thing, and we hit Calculate. And we have also entered in our cross sections. In case you didn't know, on our cross sections, the um, okay, I have a loud phone, but I've I've taken care of that issue now, and we can get back to our bearing design. The uh, one of the things that I didn't do before was show you the cross sections here, and one of the things that's really nice with Kissoft is we can go ahead and go click on our cross sections. And we can set our critical. And the software will actually look at the shaft and it'll set the critical cross sections for you. You know, A, A, B, B, C, C, and D, D. And these are the areas that you're going to have your high stress concentrations, typically. And uh, the software has already done that for you, so there it is. Now when we run our calculation, we have 6205 bearings there. It's telling us that the bearings aren't going to live, and it's telling us it's calculating that square groove based on that reference diameter, which was fine. And we see that our bearing life is pretty not very good in our results. And we can generate a report, of course. Oops. We can generate a report just by clicking here if you want. And it'll prepare a report for you, and you can go through that report. There's lots of information. And um, it'll go through this whole uh, bunch of information here. So I'm talking about the loading, et cetera. And the results way down here at the bottom on uh, the probability of failure talks about the shaft deflection, um, position of the maximum, uh, mass center of gravity, all that information. Now, if you're a guy that likes to run FEAs, that might be information you need later on for another part of the project. Uh, for us, though, we want to make sure that we can get our lifetime, our, ser our variant service life up to 2,500 hours. So the next thing we do is we look at these bearings and say, well, a 6205 doesn't work, but a 6305 might. And then we go ahead and we change this to a 6305. Okay. This needs to come back just a hair. That needs to come back a hair. And then we can run this again. And, you know, one of the things that, that's interesting to me is um, you can – Look at the at the displacement. I just want to have this over here so I can see it as we calculate this and see if that's something that's going to be acceptable for you. So you can see our displacement is pretty high. I mean, we have a, a 2.7 mil uh, displacement at the center of the shaft. Okay, it's kind of high, I think. Um, in fact, we see over almost two just in the bearing. So the bearing stiffness and the radial Clearances are, are pretty pretty large there. Um, we still aren't meeting our bearing service life. Uh, we are for the one, which is this side. But maybe we got to go even bigger on this. So maybe a 6405, which SKF doesn't make, but I believe Koyo does. Let's see here, 6405, right there. That's a pretty good size bearing on that shaft. So we position that over there and then we run it again. Now we got 2.7 mil and now we got 2.8 mil. So the bearing life is there now. Pretty good, right? Uh, but our deflection on this shaft is starting to get pretty high. And that might be a problem for you. So if that is a problem, what you can do is you can come back in here and say, well, I need to have a tapered roller bearing single row, 
and I need to have it for this point 984 design and I need to I need to probably change that to the left side because I'm going to push up against that I'm going to try and pre preload it okay and so I'm going to grab this and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to look at my offset so I'm going to do a pretension load force of about 300 pounds so I'm going to load this bearing in 300 pounds and we might want to turn that actually to the right side and then we're going to run this It's telling me that that other bearing doesn't want to work very well with it. You can see our uh, maximum deflection came down, and our service life is a little bit low, but maybe what I need to do is change this one as well. If I want to put a taper bearing, I should probably have a, another taper bearing on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and change that to taper bearing. I'm, not going, to, I'm going to grab it on this side. I'm going to adjust this just a little bit here once I get it. 0.984. Now I think should be 0.35. Maybe 0.348. Uh, there we go. Okay. And this side here is good. All right. So we're going to preload this. And then we're going to calculate. And we see now our, our uh, maximum deflection is down significantly on both ends. And uh, even in the middle, it's down quite a bit. And our life is way high, so maybe we can go to a smaller bearing. We had one at 0.34. So maybe we can reduce this a little bit. And maybe it also depends on what on what bearings you have at, you know access to. So 32205. Uh, what was this one? 32205B12. We can do the same thing here. It's a little bit smaller bearing. We don't need that big honking bearing that we had before. Let's run it again. Bearing 2 cannot be... Okay, so I need to probably switch that. So let's go ahead and switch this. There we go. Well, it doesn't like that. Well, let's figure out why. So I just changed to a nonlinear shaft, and, and I changed the node density a little bit. So it doesn't converge. I think I was right on the other one. I think it needs to be on this side. Preloaded actually, either this type is not suitable or the force has the wrong direction. Okay, so let's do this. We'll put a negative load on here. All right. Yeah, we got to get our loads right. Positive, negative. All right, so our maximum deflection came down. It's right where this chain was going to be. And we can see that our, our bearing life is uh, pretty good. we got one that's really good and the other one that's still really good, too. Um, we can also look at our fatigues, and our fatigue actually for AA went up because we're holding that shaft a little stiffer, and it's not de uh, deflecting nearly as much. So that went from like a 1.5 to a 2.6, 06. Um, and our critical speed is 2,000 hertz, 2,028 hertz. 
So this is this is one thing you can do. You can play with those bearings, find the ones that seem to fit the best on your application. Uh, it's pretty easy to do. You can kind of check it back and forth. Um, you can look at force diagrams in here. Uh, you know, you'd expect this to be a high force anyways because you've got a 1,400-pound chain load. Uh, you can look at the torque diagram between the two gears or the gear and the chain sprocket. Um, I think strength is a real good one to look at because you can see the, the percent utilization of the strength of the shaft. Um, section AA, which go figure is right in this uh, square groove, right? That's your high that's your high stress area. That's where if you're gonna have a fatigue failure, that's where it's gonna be. And you can even see it down here, it's at 2.06. You can also look at uh, 3D display of bending, right? You can kind of see how that chain is really tweaking on that shaft, okay? You can look at uh, the eigenfrequencies, which, because it's so high, it'd be it's next to nothing. The normalized displacement, it's next to nothing, again. Um, the displacement is a real good is a real good indicator of what how your application is going to respond. So the next thing we would do is we'd go into calculation and turn on our tooth trace modifications. And we have done that already. And now I'm going to run this calculation. And what I do is I click this meshing on and I turn the meshing on here as well. And the reason I do that is because I want to, be a, to do a comparison between a shaft with zero tooth trace modification and a shaft with modification, okay? So I, I go to my uh, tooth trace modifications here, and I look at my load distribution, and what I see is between A and B, there are some pretty funky load going across here on this tooth. On this one face it's high and the other face is low. And I can now, if I say this is none, and I run this, should should show the same. And then if I say, well, I want to have the program size this, there it is. It sizes the tooth profile modifications for me including the helix angle and the value of the modifications, right? And then I run this again. Now the, the line load after I make these adjustments is pretty straight. And that's what we want really for a, a very good um, low trans, transmission error and quiet and um, good efficiency running gears. So then what we do is we take this information and plug it into the to the contact analysis and the tooth modifications in our cylindrical gear um, for this gear in particular. So that's kind of uh, the analysis of the shafts and how we use it uh, further in some of the other modules, but uh, it's, it's a great way of, of uh, taking a shaft, building it, analyzing it, putting your loads on it, and then um, using that further to get your tr transmission error and your and your gear design for the gear, the entire box in a, in a better place. So, if you have questions about this, you can email me at tywarner at kissoff.com. Kissoft is k-i-s-s-s-o-f-t dot com, or you can go to our webpage kissoff.com, and you can uh, there's other web demos and trainings that you can sign up for and uh, learn more about the software. Anytime you want a test license, you can also request a test license, and we're, and we're happy to provide that for you as well. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.